thank you for joining us here today to talk about DeFi, crypto, and the challenges and opportunities that exist within it. Uh, phenomenal lineup of panelists. Once again, as you've probably noticed, there's a trend at the event all week. Great panelists, lots of insights. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Hannes to introduce yourself, and we'll continue down the line. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Hannes from uh, YOLO Investments. I cover our uh, fintech and crypto portfolios. Uh, we mainly invest into um, uh, iGaming uh, vertical and uh, the supporting infrastructure around it. So fintechs is, uh, is a big part of it, more money movement, and uh, of course crypto that um, enables it a lot. Hello, my name is Vlad. Uh, I'm the head of compliance of ZBX, which is a crypto exchange licensed here in Malta, which is uh, formerly called uh, class for virtual, virtual financial asset service provider, uh, but AKA a, a crypto exchange. <coughs> okay, my name is Oleg. I'm uh, from Black Hat Card. I'm CTO of Black Hat Card. We are registered here. We are at home in Malta. Uh, and uh, we are working as a payment institution. We're making payments and also working with, uh, with crypto uh, partners currently. Elton? Elton, the Mac Managing Director of Payhound. We're a crypto provider here in Malta, licensed as a class three service uh, provider. Um, we provide crypto payment processing and uh, settlements uh, via crypto, mainly to the gaming industry. And Artem. Yeah, so my name is Artem. I'm digital solution uh, consultant in director in Intelius, um, and I'm also enterprise architect. So Intelius is an engineering company we're providing different solutions for financial services and for iGaming industry specifically. So before we jump in, I just want to get a quick, a quick poll from the audience. I'm curious, I'm curious to know how many people here are familiar with DeFi versus crypto? Just show of hands. How many people here have never heard of DeFi? <laughs> okay, so a couple. And how many people here are currently um, investing or playing around with or who have had played around with crypto and crypto wallets and cryptocurrencies? Okay, so pretty pretty diverse group here. So I think one of the things that we definitely want to touch on today um, is challenges. Um, challenges involved with crypto, challenges involved with DeFi, and what the opportunities might be in that space. So I think first first I'd like to touch first and foremost on and um, and Elton actually if you could if you could touch on this is sort of separating out the, the the definitions of DeFi versus crypto and and how those two may play in the iGaming space. Yeah. So in terms of DeFi, it's the crypto transactions that would happen where there is no central authority or body that is governing those, those transactions, which go a bit beyond what we know in general, where um, uh, even though the operations would be on a blockchain uh, environment, the normal um, uh, institutions that we have seen would be categorized as CeFi, which are normally centralized finance, where there is, yes, an authority or body that is governing the, um, the crypto transactions, exchange of transactions, wallet uh, transfers. So those are usually the main categories of, of um, uh, these differences. And I know, so over the course of the day, um, one, of the, one of the key topics of conversation has been, has been player safety, player security, uh, has been transparency. And obviously there is a lot of that, uh, you know, there's a lot of both sides when it comes to DeFi, when it comes to crypto, but it certainly does democratize data and it democratizes access. So I think, Hannes, we'll start with you. Um, in terms of the opportunity, is there, is there an opportunity for, for DeFi to, and crypto to become much more of a mainstream focus in the iGaming space, both from an investment standpoint and uh, in a broad, broader general sense? Mm -hmm. I think uh, surely the, the crypto does bring benefits to the gaming space. Um, if we look at um, uh, even the very basic of uh, depositing and withdrawals, uh, crypto tends to move faster than uh, regular uh, fiat payments. Uh, the, with the DeFi side, if we uh, go more detailed there, the, the self-custody can be a big, um, big element and a, and a a feature for, for benefiting uh, or preferring crypto in a sense that you will uh, constantly remain uh, uh, holding your own uh, uh, own money and funds. Though it can create some friction as well because if every action and transaction is uh, recorded on chain, you have to usually do more steps and uh, clicks to uh, do those uh, tra transactions uh, uh, from the user experience side. There, there needs to be some uh, improvements uh, uh, as, as, as well. and. Um, 
I guess uh, another thing is on the on the DeFi side that uh, if everything uh, runs on a, on a blockchain, not all blockchains are um, uh, have like 100% uh, online uh, time. So they tend to some some of them, especially the newer ones, to some, sometimes tend to go offline. So that means your casino or or your gaming uh, uh, service is also down, and there is pretty much nothing you can do about it. Just wait until uh, things go back online. So so there are there are of, of course benefits, but uh, it, it it can come with some ca caveats. Vlad, opportunities for the mainstream. Uh, there are issues in, in these questions, for sure, in terms of uh, uh, regulations. I would say there is not enough regulations at this point. Uh, if we're talking about purely about gaming and accepting players' uh, deposits, for example, I believe that the involvement of a regulated entity is important. Uh, so that uh, I, so that the gaming companies do not necessarily expose themselves to uh, risks uh, they are not necessarily competent in. Uh, volatility risks, AML risks are uh, much different. And this is where a regulated entity uh, might help. Oleg. Yeah. I would like to say, continually with what Vlad is saying, that we currently have the MICA, which, is, which will be next year completely mandatory and will be in place. And that will rise the cryptocurrency companies to the same level as financial institutions. And firstly, we will, uh, we will should find some, some uh, place to work together. Firstly, uh, secondly, uh, it's definitely uh, makes the market more stable. Since uh, apart simply IML, what we are all this speaking about, uh, as Mika is also saying that uh, the cryptocurrency exchanges should protect customer funds, which is completely and very crucial. They should have enough uh, technology as financial institution to uh, to cover everything like that. Therefore, principally, it make a, uh, will make a stable payment uh, payment environment. And also, what it also will, uh, uh, if we're speaking about the possibilities, we will be able to exchange information from, for example, we and cryptocurrency exchangers. And the same as the gamers, since this, this will increase the level of the customer support. Since if, for example, we have identified the customer and uh, uh, the same gamer not, uh, he should do that. But we can share this information and the customer on board will be faster. And th that is, I believe, that will be a future definitely of all communication be be between payment institution, cryptocurrency exchanges, gamers. And then we, we, we will be speaking about some... <clears throat> some uh, I know ecosystem, it's very bad, bad word from for all these years, but definitely it's, it's an ecosystem in this way. Elton. Yeah, I think, the, the, as, I, as uh, my colleagues mentioned here, um, the introduction of MICA will provide certain stability within the market. Operators right now, even though there is regulation in Malta, are still sometimes a bit skeptic because they fear that the traditional banking infrastructure mm -hmm. might have its own doubts about allowing um, a gaming operator to introduce a new alternative method where the risk appetite of the traditional financial uh, industry is, is not there or there's no literally appetite for that. So I think the introduction of an EU-wide regulation will uh, help a lot on that. On DeFi per se, I'm still a bit... Uh, I, I don't think uh, th there's enough within MICA that covers um, uh, DeFi in general. So I don't think that um, if we had to stick with gaming and DeFi in general, most of them, I don't, know, I don't think they will go for that type. I definitely want to come back to that, but we'll uh, finish up with uh, Artem. Yeah, I will a little bit extend on what my, my colleague said about the decentralized finance and implementation here. So, but to reveal a little bit of secret what we're actually having right now, it's not that there will be new companies doing DeFi uh, sort of applications for a gaming for anything like that. No, there is already uh, classical financial institutions like the Swiss banks implementing DeFi systems. So it's a, just a technology. So technology which basically uh, tells that how that uh, like how the transactions will actually scale and et cetera, et cetera. What they are trying to do right now is to find a way how their own regulations or external regulations will be implemented, right? So 
different financial institutions, different DeFi systems allow us to do different things like throughout the contracts, for instance, like the, in crypto, there is a contract, so you can actually define the rules and just throw it out to the system, the system that will be self-organizing. So they are exploring that aspect. So by there, I mean classical financial institutions. They have a manpower, they have money to do that. There will be no, not a lot of startups, I believe, um, which will be playing really on the market. But they're doing that just, to, just because, like, first of all, they see the potential of the technology. And uh, they see that that will definitely go there. So um, regulation, their only regulations and the regulations enforced by the government, they will be definitely implementing it by that technology. And technology already allows this. So right now we are in a stage where they're playing with this. And I, I hope that will stabilize at some matter when the regulations will be specific, saying like how that should be implemented. Yeah. You know, Ed, El Elton, you mentioned you mentioned the the issues that may exist as far as compliance go. Um, you know, and to speak of compliance, we we saw the collapse of FTX, which sort of rocked the rocked everything in the world of crypto. Um, you're seeing more and more more banks, uh, crypto banks and exchanges that are pausing deposits and uh, or sorry withdrawals. So there's obviously um, you know it's pretty tumultuous, and the United States has effectively gone to war with the world of crypto. Uh, and so I think my I think the question then really becomes: Is there still a market? How do you rebuild trust within the within the audience? How do you build some sort of a model, or what what does a model entail? That would allow for for DeFi and crypto, crypto in particular, because the word itself has become so, so so tied with a lot of the fraud that's taken place. How do you start to build that trust up again, and what sorts of small steps can be taken or offers can be made to sort of get this more into the mainstream um, and more widely accepted? So, Hannes, we'll start uh, with you. Uh, I think uh, time is a big big element here. So, it like you build trust uh, through th time, but uh, if we look at the bad actors like uh, Regulations can uh, help there and uh, and eliminate the, like at least the part of it. So and the case that U.S. is pretty much gone um, like against uh, uh, like doesn't have that positive outlook on crypto anymore. But it doesn't mean that uh, there aren't other jurisdictions in this world that uh, that uh, uh, don't see it the other way than uh, support it. Uh, Europe is in uh, in uh, in the lead with uh, with MICA. There are uh, Dubai, Hong Kong, Singapore, very friendly. Uh, regions uh, in terms of uh, adoption. So, and crypto being uh, like fully global, uh, there is, it doesn't. Uh, there is no reason for the U.S.-based uh, uh, companies couldn't move somewhere else and uh, still um, uh, service the service the industry. And uh, of course, the U.S. market is uh, is a big, uh, an important element uh, of uh, uh, in terms of volumes and uh, value. But uh, uh, I'd say in, in in terms of utility and actions, uh, there's a lot more in happening in the emerging markets. So. I'm personally rather more pro uh, regulations, but there's supposed to be there. There should be like good regulations, and uh, and uh, and uh, if if those uh, play out right, then uh, that's gonna build trust in the system as well. Vlad, I would say there are two aspects to it. Uh, one is uh, uh, the safeguarding of clients' uh, assets. This is referring to FTX, making sure that uh, clients' funds. Are, <clears throat> are not being spent uh, improperly. Mm, and second is restoring faith in uh, the stable coins and their ability to maintain value and the existence of reserves. And both of these uh, are, depend on the regulations, not just the regulations, but the enforcement uh, as well. And for uh, regulated entities like ourselves, inf enforcement is important because when you have to compete with someone who is not following any rules, you can't, you can't do that. You can't uh, compete right. uh, with them. So uh, clear rules for, for everyone. And the next thing is harmonization of these rules. Because when we have uh, fragmented regulations, uh, classification of crypto assets in different countries, approaches to stable coins, these uh, new regulations are being introduced, uh, they're being changed, uh, each of them has transitor, a transitory period, and we have a lot of jurisdictions around the world, and it's like almost there are weekly changes which you uh, have to follow. So some kind of harmonization, uh, also in terms of technology, 
uh, if we speak about the travel rule, for example, which is something similar to the SWIFT system and the traditional finance, the, uh, the requirements are being implemented, but we still don't have a common technology which can uh, allow us to talk to each other in different parts of the world. So the industry players have to come together and define some kind of a standard, like I can compare Sony, Philips, and whoever Samsung decided that 16 by 9 is the, right. is the aspect ratio, which is going to be the standard. Same thing has to happen uh, here. Multilaterals cannot do that. They say we want to be technology neutral. Individual jurisdictions cannot do that uh, because they each play in their own backyard. So it's the industry players and associations who, who, who must do that. Mm -hmm. Oleg. OK, may I, apart that I'm completely agree with my, with my colleagues, but I would say that trust is very emotional part. It's not about the technology. It's not about the legislation. It's not about the, all of that. Uh, what definitely? when we are trusting something, we are trusting why? It's transparent, and we are trusting before we are trusting. Since, uh, and there are elements which uh, I believe that, I know our customers a lot, and they never know where we hold our money, maybe some few of them, what we, what, how we're securing, what the technology we're using, nothing. They're saying, okay, I believe your financial institution, I believe in you. This is what I'm hearing that. In this case, if I'm speaking about the trust for, uh, for, for, for the crypto, it's great, and we should do all this, all these layers. But we should make a transparent and un understandable way to, to the customer. They should have a clear procedure. They will see everything what happened, and for them it will be OK. If we're speaking the trust us as a financial institution, as a players, yes, for us it's necessary all these steps, which it should be harmonized, we should be uh, storing customer, uh, customer funds in the way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we are here speaking about the customers, simple customers, they, what they currently we hear, they said, okay, I would like to be sure. I'm, I'm saying what I can do to, sh to assure you. I can say it, it's great, it's, it's safe. This is what I can do. And exactly speaking about the trust, we should create for our customers clear and very simple uh, notes why you should trust on that. And I believe it's, uh, it's more PR than, than some, some deep, uh, deep work, I mean, for, for that. Well, I mean, wouldn't you, why wouldn't you say that a, a big part of that would have to be larger institutions buying, in, buying into the opportunity, larger institutions backing it? Exactly, exactly. Since, since it's also the point of trust. They're trusting, right. it's, it's, no, it's normal ways. And if you trust your uh, neighbors, then you will be uh, using his, uh, his advisors, principally. The same story. If you trust your bank, if you trust your financial institution, if you trust your product you are using, then you'll be trusting also other products which, which is supported. And therefore, I'm saying that it's, it's more emotional part than some technology. Right. Alton. On my end, I'd like to twist a bit the question because they have said most of what um, uh, is, is very um, uh, approving in terms of the regulation part. So I'd like to give it a twist on the gaming side of, um, uh, of the getting back into the trust uh, element of, of all this. So I'd like to go to the service providers. Yes, regulation will help a lot. Malta was proven right, um, even though we as, service, uh, as the service providers saw that the regulation was very tough when compared to other jurisdictions. But ultimately, Malta, to be fair, was proven, right? Because the MICA regulation mimics a lot what the regulation in Malta uh, states. But besides that, if we had to take the operators, it is also um, the regulator's approach, the Malta gaming operator's approach, into providing clarity as to how operators ha can accept crypto as a, uh, as a payment method. And that is what um, they have done. They have tested um, uh, the sphere before, and now they have issued policies earlier this year. Um, and for me, when a regulator issues policy, it wants to provide certainty to the market. The player per se will always bet, being it crypto or not. So in terms of the player, the trust, yes, the trust element factor may be onto which um, operator will will play mostly, but the players will still bet. Right. <laughs> Adam. Um, so for me, it's a little bit diff like different, for sure. So I don't know why none of my colleagues told that it's, uh, but the crypto blockchain itself as a technology, it's the, the trust issue is already implemented there. We, basically it's like, uh, 
we started with a simple ledger, which is public, right? Now, now we have different type of the technologies, blockchain technologies, whatever. But the trust issue was at the very beginning, we already have a technology about that. So what I think we're missing or what we should do is get rid of men in the middle, sort of. So every time we're speaking about the trust, it's actually explaining someone who don't understand or who don't have an access to technology, and we should trust someone who's, uh, who's operating with that technology. If we're, if we're talking about the banks or anyone, um, I don't know, the gateway to the crypto, or when specifically about that, so the application owner, so uh, we should be more talking about trust to, the, to him. It's not about the technology. Technology itself already implemented this. So if you will go to anywhere and look at the blockchains, you look at the old transactions, some nerds like me doing that sometimes, you can see where the money moves and how, how is everything happening, but no one actually doing that in their own mind, right? So technology is not a problem. The man in the middle is a problem. The man in the middle, it's like in quotes, obviously, it's the right. usually institution or something. This is where the problem goes. Right? Well, so let me ask you this. Do you think that, uh, you know, I was, during a, a panel earlier today, one of, the, one of the points that came up was the fact that um, the easiest way to start moving things forward as far as decentralization is to just do it and not, and, and not, rely, not rely on, on getting buy-in from the, from the consumer. Yep. Just provide, you know, it's, it's a back-end process, right? It's a, techno it's a technological implementation. It doesn't need explaining and buy-in. So do you think that that would make more sense to, to see this go forward? We're basically right now having a problem of applying a horse ride rules for riding a bikes or motorcycles. This is what we're having right now. So uh, with that thing in mind, like let's just do what we have to do and decentralize it. And what we will be getting is the problems, of course. This is how humans usually work. We design in a way like we have a problem facing this consequences like changing something, rules and et cetera. Yes, that will be happening. If you don't like this, probably you shouldn't be doing that in the very front end, right? But yeah, that will be happening. We should do that and based on the reaction of the market or I would say an errors, then apply some rules, yes. Well, that sort of brings me um, to my next question, which which has to do with with the question of is it the regulator's job to come in and provide? The regulator of Malta has already come in, provided a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of rules and regulation that's been beneficial. Um, but the question here now, especially with with something that's not currently regulated and which sort of exists in in its own space, de completely decentralized, does it make more sense for operators uh, in the iGaming space to start to implement? Opportunities for for crypto opportunities to to bet in crypto to um, for transactions to be done in decentralized financial markets, uh, and then have the regulators catch up, or does it make more sense to wait on the regulator to come in and tell you what can and can't be done, and then get started? And I'll I'll just start with Hannes and we'll work our way down. I I think regulators are usually always uh, lagging behind, so there's going to be probably more. Uh, uh, demand and adoption coming from the uh, from the user and the operator uh, side. So, so probably more push, uh, I'd say, is coming from there. Vlad, I would say a combination of those, and I, I, uh, what I mean is mostly the industry associations and chambers of commerce. Uh, this, these types of institutions, so they they are somewhere between the regulators and each individual operator. They they can take this uh, leadership in in uh, in consulting the regulator as well, and setting some kind of standards, at least best practices, and this way it can uh, can progress further. And do you think? And, and just to add to that, do you think it would make more sense then uh, to start to see some some adoption and some buy-in from regulators if maybe it was done? Along lines with the stablecoin in place, as opposed to as opposed to using something that's a little bit more volatile, um, like a Bitcoin. Yes, but keep in mind that the global trend, including uh, through Mika, through the new Hong Kong re regime, is that stablecoins will uh, be equal to e-money. So uh, there is going to be quite some regulation there. Good for us. As right. a regulated business, <laughs> uh, we can justify the costs. Right. <laughs> uh, but it's definitely better once uh, the faith is restored. So if I use a stablecoin, I know that it's it's not just because someone told. Right. There is like, uh, if you want a gold standard behind it or some kind of fiat currency behind it, and someone has audited it. It's not just the the service provider tells right. that. Uh, Which so may get more enthusiastic buy-in from a regulator. 
Yes. Exactly. Oleg. Okay, if I'm speaking about the, our financial industry principles, and we all the time, all these years, principles starting from the beginning, we assume all world around as a house. Then we are, would like to sort this house, to understand these payments, to understand the customers. In this way, the crypto doesn't change anything in this way. Since, uh, if you will remember cash payments, did you think that it's uh, uh, more different than from, from crypto? No. If we are speaking about that we can control the, uh, the, um, uh, what, what is done, not, since there is still some uh, cryptocurrency exchanges inside, and I don't know how it's gone, since they're not showing operation in, uh, inside. Therefore, sometimes there is some methods how to close all the stuff, and therefore I can't rely on the general ledger. And therefore, I believe in this chaos, we definitely need some guidelines, and therefore the intervention of regulators are so necessary. Since, uh, yes, we have some, some points of controls, yes, we understand what to do, but also for our you know, that we are sleeping very well, we should understand definitely that we are doing that one, that one, and that one. And also, what is also very funny, that from the perspective of the customers, they're also expecting that we are working in absolutely control and understandable field. That, 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 that's what I see. Yeah. And Elton? Yeah, I think, um, to be fair, I will still stand my ground in terms of regulation has to be part of the flow in some way or another. Because uh, the principle of uh, DeFi, I like it in general, but there will be at some point an on-ramping or off-ramping element that is entrusted to the regulated entity to take over that part of the flow. So I think that's where regulation has to kick in and um, continue entrusting regulated entities in doing their job. To close off? Yeah, I, I know we're right on time, So, but I think the regulators do, should do two things open up with the regulation saying, this is what you can do, uh, this is where you can play off, and then do adjustment to those regulations. This is a utopia which is not never gonna happen, so <laughs> there will be always, there will be always catching up. So, so my, my, my thought is here is that regulations definitely has to be, so they have to catch up with the technologies for sure, exploring first, because yeah, uh, what they do right now is okay-ish. So what they can do better is to, uh, I would say, allow things first, saying, okay, you can do some of those. We will regulate the details or tight the bolts later, for sure, 100%. But if they will open up this, uh, my colleagues already mentioned that, the trust will be much higher within the users. That's, that's, I, that's I agree, yes. You know, it's funny, I've, uh, I've closed pretty much every one of my panels uh, over the last couple of days with a question about regulators, and so far, every single person has had a completely different answer, which is always <laughs> fun. Um, but anyway, thank you, gentlemen, very much, very informative, and thank you all for joining us, and we'll move it along. Thank you.